If you had a portal gun from the fantastic video game series of the same name, what would you do? I'd fly to Japan and then shoot a portal in a cat cafe and then fly home and shoot a portal in my living room for obvious reasons, but what if while messing around with portals, you messed up? Could you end all life on Earth? Experiment time. I want to go through a thought experiment with you, but it's about the ending of Portal 2. It's a phenomenal game, so if you don't want to have the ending spoiled, turn back right now. All right, at the end of Portal 2, you finally get rid of the evil AI Wheatley by shooting a portal both beneath the robot and on the moon. It's an awesome physics-based scene, just like the rest of the game, but like Chris Batchelor asked me on my Facebook page, what would happen if the portal to the moon never closed? If a portal to the moon never closed and wasn't blocked or plugged by some debris, air would indeed rush out. The atmospheric pressure in space is effectively zero, as it is on the moon, no pascals. But on Earth, atmospheric pressure is a hundred thousand pascals. This pressure differential means that if you opened a portal to the moon, it would force air out into the void. And by force, I mean blowout at Mach 1. As we've gone through on previous Because Sciences, like how Kirby can suck good, a pressure differential between one atmosphere and a near vacuum produces what's called choked flow, or an air velocity of 340 meters per second, the speed of sound in normal air, through an orifice like a portal. If Wheatley was right near a portal when it opened to the moon, he would definitely be sucked into space. Then what would happen? Well, all of the air in the room would force itself through the portal at Mach 1, and then because of the pressure differential, all of the air in the chamber would force itself through the portal. And then what? At standard pressure, all of the air on Earth would fit into a sphere that would cover two-thirds of the United States by diameter. What if all of the air on Earth, Earth's atmosphere, was simple, like a pressurized spaceship rock floating through space, and a portal was effectively poking a hole in that spaceship. How long would it take for all of Earth's four billion cubic kilometers of air to escape? GLaDOS does like to play the long game after all. Yes, I do, Kyle. It would take... <clears throat> It would take a very long time for all of the air to leave through a portal, and then all of the humans would die, and then everything else. The math is gonna get complicated in a second, but right now the basics are basic. How much air would flow through a portal? Well, we have air, which has a density of around one kilogram for every cubic meter it takes up, and it needs to go through an orifice that's kind of like an ellipse that needs to fit a person through it, maybe one square meter. It's also traveling through the portal at Mach 1, or 340 meters per second. If you add all of those together and combine them and do the math, you get a mass flow rate of 380 kilograms per second flowing through the portal. Now, you could just take the mass of Earth's air and divide by the mass flow rate, but this is where things get complicated. As air flows out of a system like this, the pressure and the temperature are going to change, and therefore the mass flow rate is going to change over time. Now, you can check the full proof of this down in the show notes, but you can use this equation, making some assumptions about volume and area and pressure and temperature to solve for time. And if you do, the time it would take for all of Earth's air to flow out of a giant sphere like this would be two a million years. It would take two million years before there is so little air on Earth that no human could survive on it without a pressure suit. Unless you want to pee yourself and poop yourself and projectile vomit and boil all at the same time like we went through a couple of weeks ago. And if you imagine a little further, Earth without any air at all, the oceans are boiling and freezing at the same time. Birds are falling out of the sky, but they'd be dead long before that 
anyway. The Earth's surface is baked sterile by solar radiation, and the Earth's sky is no longer blue, it's black. Anything on Earth that needs oxygen to breathe is dead, except for some organisms in the deep oceans, at least for a couple of years after the Earth loses air. But, really? yeah, I, yeah, I know, it looks pretty good for you, yes. but thankfully, a portal experiment gone awry wouldn't be the end of us. Um. The Earth's atmosphere, <coughs> oh! The Earth's atmosphere isn't simple. We still don't really know when it's going to rain. In reality, a small leak wouldn't be as bad as what we're already doing. When the Earth was just getting started, outgassing from volcanoes were beginning the Earth's earliest atmosphere, and they still significantly contribute today. Every second, on average, volcanoes are pumping out over 6,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. No, they're sentient! Are they sentient? But even though volcanic gases like carbon dioxide added to Earth's early atmosphere and continue to do so, volcanoes don't gas anything like how humanity gases. By taking hydrocarbons out of the ground and burning them, we are adding one million kilograms of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere every second. Since the start of this scene, we have added this many Saturn V rockets worth of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere by weight. And now remember that only 380 kilograms of air would be leaving through our portal mistake every second, which means that you could leave over 3,000 portals open to space and the loss of air wouldn't even keep track with our own increasing carbon emissions. If anything, global warming would wipe us out long before our thought experiment would. Yeah, I know, it's it's a gas problem, like neurotoxin, you're happy, I get it. Neurotoxin? No, no neurotoxin! Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, that doesn't make up for it. Kyle. The confection is a falsehood. Kyle. So, could a portal accidentally end all life on Earth by siphoning off all of Earth's air into space? Well, in theory, yes, air would escape, but in practice, no. The Earth is a very complicated system that is continuously adding gases to itself via volcanoes and mostly reckless us. The ending of Portal 2 is fantastic and a really good thought experiment, but in the end, we'd be still alive until climate change wipes out the majority of species in our lifetime unless we do something. Because science, you monsters. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like the episode that you just saw and on Facebook and Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes like I did today. And I have a new show with my good friend Dan Casey. It's called Musquatch where we round up all the news about a very impressive man in a very silly way. So again, thanks for watching, Stephanie. I've seen a lot of questions and comments online about what if you had two portals right on top of each other and you passed an object through, wouldn't that be a perpetual motion device? Well, no, even though the portals say that they maintain the momentum of the object traveling through it, every time they entered actual physical space and they weren't just traveling through some portal, they would encounter some air resistance. And so over time, they would slow down until they didn't have enough speed to make it through some portal. So there, but what if you put them, what if you put them right on top of each other? Well, I guess you go nowhere. <laughs>